the bullet holes at the base of the wall tell me that this property has suffered from damp in the past. Almost certainly the previous owners didn't understand that the damp at the base of the wall was caused by condensation. There are some issues outside as this crack tells me and the crack in the uh, render but by and large it's not being caused by the outside but inside. Have a look around now. For each room we're going to look at the dampness, mould and also look at a thermal image. In these thermal images red is warm, purple is cold, you can see where the cold patches are on the wall, the heat loss is in the corner mainly. So we're just talking about the mould and the potential for allergies uh, and the you clearly have got a lot of mould in behind here goes all the way up behind the cupboard. Um, so I'm going to recommend moving the bed and the cupboard around, but but you should put some insulation here. You'll see in the thermal images why you're getting, you get a lot of heat loss in the corner because you've got more surface area on the outside wall. Um, so you really want to have this free. If you have the bed the other way around, then and maybe the bed uh, along here uh, and move that cupboard over into the corner there. Then you'll get airflow there and you'll reduce the mould, you'll reduce the dust mites, the uh, uh, radiators just next to the bed. If you wanted to have it a slight distance away, that's that would be great. Um, but it you'll reduce the the dust mites in this room dramatically by making those small changes. The other thing I would do is turn your beds, turn the pillows, turn the duvets daily and I would be turning the mattress weekly to reduce the dust mites and risk of mould, uh, of um, uh, allergies, so I say. But it will also be beneficial from the mould point of view. But as I say, the, the mould is like the canary in the mine. It's telling you that you've got a condensation problem uh, and too much humidity and the source is going to be uh, typically the bathroom and in this case also drying clothes. Leave it open. Yeah, well, I think this is the source of the problem. Uh, we'll look into the main bedroom. Uh, this is where you're getting the, the most. Mould grows where relative humidity goes above 85%. So do allergic dust mites. Uh, damp and, and mould um, and this is a damp meter and you can see the condensation I mean it's dribbling off the, the window and we're midway through not a cold day but uh, so I understand you've had an attempt at damp proofing this anti-mould paint but when it's really bad you, you'll struggle and also part of the problem is the curtains are going to trap so these the radiator uh, will have precious little little benefit to this part of the wall because the the heat flows up this way and it draws the air and then up uh, and unfortunately what happens is that the um, curtains will trap the the um, vapor up against the cold wall that um, you get very little, you get a lot of heat loss on these walls. I'll show you some thermal images later, but it's the nature of external walls. I think they're probably too brick wide. I know we I chatted about that, but you always get heat loss in bays because more external surface area, plus the way that the, the bricks are put together, um, inevitably you get uh, more heat loss. That's a simple solution, simple thing. I understand you're getting some heat loss in here. You can see, I uh, look at the uh, condensation in this room. So the part of this room, as it does have a radiator, but it's quite small. Um, this, I'm sh I'll show you this because I'm calibrating the data loggers. Uh, this is in salt saline solution, uh, whereby 75% uh, relative humidity is uh, the specific relative humidity of salt. So it's got an extractor fan. I'll test that out later. Um, 
and the, the length of time it lasts. Uh, let's go into this room. So here we have um, condensation in the corner. Uh, and I'll show you with um, this damp meter. This is um, costs about a 20th of the other one. So this costs about 23 pounds compared to about 500 pounds. And it's just as good. So the, it does um, radio frequency, which is radio waves at the back. Uh, you have to move it onto masonry and not drywall. It starts off at drywall. But it's a really good way of you finding out whether the, um, following my techniques dries the wall up. You can you can log it, such as putting the damp meter up against the wall and then and then just taking a meter reading every week or something like that. Uh, in the cupboard, you're going to get very little airflow, so you're going to have mold and condensation issues in that cupboard. Um, but it's it's all about heat loss and excess vapor from insufficient ventilation relative humidity is a measure of air's capacity to hold moisture at a hundred percent air can no longer hold moisture and that's called the dew point in the summer you can hold lots of moisture and the dew point will be at night when you see the dew on the ground outside which can be as high as 19 degrees in winter, the dew point outside will tend to be about 5, 6, maybe 12 if it's raining. So what you want to do is try and keep the internal ventilation working to bring the internal dew point down and keep the warms, the, the walls nice and warm uh, with sufficient heating, airflow and not trap air against the wall such as behind cupboards. So I'm going to show you with uh, a really inexpensive alternative. And so the one I use costs about £400. But this one is an inexpensive anemometer. You can get on the internet for about £20. And you can see there's no airflow. So I like to encourage people to find their own damp issues. Um, see all the condensation here as well. Yeah. The the, um, the 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 vent is just coming straight into the loft. So actually, it's just as well it's not working. So some builder has, uh, has decided not to um, blow it out. You you can see it, can't you? So this is the family bathroom vent. It's got a long duct which is going to restrict the airflow. Probably accounts for why it's not particularly fast. But you can see it's definitely dropping down and it looks like it's going out through the eaves. The other one, so yeah. it's above the air brick, it's yeah. right up at the top there. That seems to be the outlet, so that looks good. Another thing to note is this, this extractor fan, which is the only one that ducks out, but is running about half the speed, uh, switches off immediately, turn the light off. You want a 30 minute overrun. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on setting up the hive, but if uh, so, I have a hive as well, so I vaguely remember how to do it. If you look at the settings, it's got a frost temperature, which is seven. Now, if you use a dehumidifier, it's fine to have seven, but if not, you should move that up to 12 um, because otherwise it's too cold. But you will save yourself a lot of heating costs if you use a dehumidifier. Um, the other thing to look at is your your heat schedule um, and I just look to see what you have set up so you, you go down you're completely off now I'll show you mine but um, for each one of these I go down to a number uh, that the lowest is 14 so I just allow it to slowly drop off and then back up again it's better for the boiler so you'll spend less money on replacing your boiler it also reduces the risk of condensation. But if you go away, you can you can drop it down, but use a dehumidifier. You'll save yourself a lot of money doing that. It's important to appreciate that as beautiful as tropical fish are, they produce a lot of vapour. Uh, and really the only thing to do about it is to have a dehumidifier going. Uh, though you're probably going to get, um, well, you'll know how much 
water you have to put into the tank, all the water that you put in is coming back out as vapour and it will find the coldest wall. This is the kitchen extractor fan outlet. It's showing about 20 litres a second. It should be drawing air out at about 30 litres a second.